17 thousand. Barbara, so let's call 46. Yep, I got you. 
Don't puke on me, Joe. No, I'm good. We're good now. I V comes back to a 2015 Yukon on a Ramsey. It was seen through our lane lines, alternating speeds, and information oh. at Fort. Passing Angus, westbound. <laughs>
same time as dark. You should still be coming towards you. Time to take it now. Time to take it. Time to take it. Okay. All right. Squad the dot. Get ready. Uh, I'll just be going under the trestle. Three, two, one. Under the trestle. And we're approaching dot right Are now. Are these guys out of it? Because if they're out of it, we're passing them. I assume so. Thirty-three, thirty-one. Hit six. Continue to help on. On three. We're gonna pit it, dude. Northbound on three. South approaching Aladdin. Southbound or northbound? Right. Northbound on three. Northbound on three. Yeah, that's done. That's what I heard. Northbound. Northbound. You can start there. It's going from there. Okay, so we have a good stick to that five. We are uh, slowing still northbound on uh, three. Northbound from Rich Valley. There we go. Sorry, Joe. Good. Now's the time to end it, though. Yep. All right, northbound to Ridge Valley. How far off the dot are we? You're close. Northbound to 93rd. 11 on the Montana Hill. All right, where are we? Come back, go ahead. Oh my god. It's going to make a couple of bends up here though. Yeah, I got you. Work. Trail. Anne Marie Trail, northbound of Anne Marie Trail. We're just trying to, and this turns into a robbery. Anne Marie Trail. Yeah, I know, it's just, this is pretty kitty womp is coming through here, so I'm not trying to cause an accident. We want to catch up, but we. Thanks for riding us. Avondale, you're great. Fully clear. There's his bumper. Rev's trying to get on his own. There's another bumper. Here, I'll grab the canning scene 1447. Hey, Paul, triple three. Nice work, everybody. Thanks for the help. I pulled the back. Trout. Five one. Eleven S eleven two eleven oh nine. Go ahead. You involved in the pit? Hey, sir. Happy. 
I'll be there in a few minutes.
find me a gas station. Three forty-seven Metro. All right. All right, backseaters. Uh, if we're live here, I think we're back up and running. We kind of got off to rolling here with um, things and kind of just went live without really getting a chance to explain exactly what we were doing. Um, oh, I gotta get out of here. We're just kind of kind of leaving the scene here. If you didn't catch on, we found the Jeep commander that fled uh, Mr. Jelly Joe here last week, right? Yeah, and under Sheriff Martin. A little further. <sighs> I gotta get through. Come on, Kyle. Get out of the way. I'm trying to... <sighs> Kyle! We weren't expected to jump on this early. They got medics coming, so we gotta get gas. He's just gonna park on the side street there. We'll wait for medics. I'm okay. Uh -oh. We don't have medics yet. No, they're on King Road. Six five nine hundred. Six five. All right. We're gonna let them clean up. Uh do their thing. I'm gonna, we uh we need gas. <laughs> we do need <laughs> gas. We're a little low. Sport mode took all my uh I thought I had half a tank, but that's on me. We've got some northbound here. Any? Yeah I'm looking. Gas stations. Otherwise we'll be calling for a gas Sorry, can. I was on the phone. He's gonna be ours, correct? We're taking custody of yeah, it's the Ramsey County Warrants. It's our that apprehension. It's our vodka. Yes. How, f how far? Alright, I'm almost there. I can ride in the rig. I'm going to go for each of Folks, um, so we apologize uh, for not really getting a chance to fill you in it. Things were kind of uh, happening rapidly. And uh, this individual was wanted. Uh, I remember watch last week's episode with Under Sheriff Mike Martin and myself were in the car, and this Jeep commander was fled from St. Paul. And uh, the individual has several active felony warrants out of uh, Ramsey County. And uh, he's been wanted. Uh, he's been in several subsequent chases or fled from police um, since last week. Um, but we got to make a pit stop here pretty quick. Uh, we're, we're getting low on fumes, on gas, and we're pretty much coasting into the gas station here. Um, Pursuits do that, especially when you don't have a full tank. Uh, so 
say kudos to uh the chopper huh? yeah uh, the chopper was up multiple different agencies uh, uh washington or uh, dakota county in Grove heights uh, state patrol um 531 right staff reporting a suspicious male in a black SUV. So if it wasn't for that chopper, um, keeping an eye on that car from above, um, he, we would have. They, the way the guy was driving, just recklessly without even anyone anywhere near him. Um, so kudos to the uh, the chopper state patrol for keeping an eye on him and successful um, sticks and, and uh, looks like maybe a pit. We came in towards the uh, the end. We were always. In the mix, but um, kind of came in towards the end. Um, so, all right, gas is going. I think we were down here for an another individual, one of our motor vehicle theft suspects we were tracking um, earlier in the year, was right in this area. Yeah, we had tracked him down here. Few. Have come down that way, and uh, Thomas probably has one of the better driving skills I've seen of, uh, of a deputy. And of course, as being a passenger, you get a little motion sickness at times, but yeah, that's my fault. 2261 I mean, that was just <laughs> 1459. It's just a day's work, but it worked out in the end. Yeah, we got our bad guy, he's been wanted, he's obviously. <sighs> not good for public safety because he keeps fleeing law enforcement. Yeah, so so luckily, uh, happy story, he didn't hit anybody. He only ruined, uh, I think, his car. See, like great work that was a lot of good work by a lot of different agencies so yeah i'm sure i missed somebody but you know dakota county and rural heights i think even rosemont was in the mix at one time state patrol of course um of course our apprehension deputies do a phenomenal job um tony body the canine he was down there um yeah just all around solid uh, teamwork <laughs> I, th I think next time uh We'll give you a barf bag. <laughs> like on an airplane. But I know not, what you're saying. When you're not, it's a weird feeling when you're not in control. It was more of a stopping, starting. Well, all gas, all brake. Huh? No, but at one point we were close. We were trying to catch up, especially with sticks. Uh, you know, at that point, you got to try to end it. Well, and the other thing too, I'm, I'm looking at a phone. I'm trying to look on a map. That, <laughs> that makes it, <laughs> that intensified. So now, um, do, now do that yourself when you're. <laughs> well, when I'm you're, just saying. I'm saying making me like dizzy, like yeah. looking on the map um, while someone else is driving. And you did good work. Thank you. I mean, we stayed the course, right? Sometimes you have a new rider with you, someone you don't ride with, and yeah, you I get mean, turned around backwards because you don't have. As a cop, you have control by yourself of the computer, the mapping. You just you do everything yourself. You have a routine. Someone else takes that spot. It's kind of little worrisome yeah why don't you uh make a call down there and make sure we're not needed back down there just call uh uh Sabaka. well i was gonna ask to see if someone wants to uh put his car 280 all right The callers and route back to meet with you. Just, just don't show my wife this video. Hey, yeah, do you need somebody uh, to bring your car if you're going to Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Tell him we're live. Does he need us back down? Or we'll, um, you don't, you don't, you, do you need us for anything else? We got to stop you. Yes. You want me to get across the street from All the car right. over? You want to meet him there? Yep, bye. Good? Good. All right. You're with us now. Busy week, huh? So far? For yeah, what did we day? have? Uh, well, we're not going to okay. too many details. We uh, essentially, uh, good work by Intel, discovered that uh, there's possibly some individuals with guns out there with switches on it. Um, we took the case and worked it. 
uh, and successfully actually took a gun yesterday off the streets and an extended mag uh, switch. It appears by all accounts to be a ghost gun. Um, yeah. And at some point, you know, maybe the sheriff can, can share some uh, more details. There's, there's, there's more of this incident that I would like to, to share, but because of the individual's age and, and the, the sensitive uh, investigation at this point. Um, but yeah, uh, juvenile was taken into custody yesterday with, with a, a firearm, a switch that we were um, tracking and monitoring. Well, I guess, you know, I don't know if everyone knows what a switch is. Do you want to explain that? Uh, Thomas could probably do a better idea, but basically what a switch does, it, it, it can be put on a gun, like a Glock or a firearm, and it essentially turns that into an automatic weapon. Yeah. Um, we're seeing a lot more of those. It's pretty worrisome. Um, you know, I, most cops have seen videos. They've or potentially shot them. There's some trainings that let you shoot them. Um, kind of become experts on testing. You gotta test fire them to uh, charge someone with that on and verify that it's not just for show. Um, but it's scary to think that, you know, they add a 30 round mag into a little handgun and it's now a fully automatic handgun in the hands of people that probably don't know how to operate it. Well, that's just it. It's, we're talking literally uh, 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds, um, let alone don't even, you shouldn't be having a firearm and, and uh, once you put an auto sear or a switch on a firearm, it, it, it really, uh, it's a scary thing because of how, how fast that fires and we've had several incidences where we've heard where they've accidentally shot themselves where they pull the trigger and it does like a uh, like a windmill type thing where they fire the weapon and just like boom 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 like all that you know 10 15 20 rounds a lot of these guys carry high capacity um, magazines extended magazines and 50 round drums some of them yeah absolutely so obviously once that case uh, you know like you said the sheriff wants it's able to share more info but you can, yeah, you can mute that. I'm, I'm scanning, so I don't, I don't fully have the skills of five different radios going like Pat and Bob. <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, that's uh, yeah, multitasking and listening. Uh, absolutely, I, I, I see a lot of people asking where that chase ended. Um, it was uh, Robert. Mm, was it not? It's let's say 90th and 90th Street. Um, yeah, I'm trying to. So it's south of Cliff Road, obviously. Let me give you a better. Is it? Is it would that be Egan? Is that Egan? That would be Egan, I guess. I'm good with directions, but you know the borders outside of Ramsey. Maybe even Rosemont. Yeah. Well, no, Rosemont stopped at their border. I thought because we they let us kindly pass. No, well, we click on some ones. Chase was not just in Ramsey County. It started uh, Ramsey County. St. Paul put eyes on it. Um, it fled. I guess it, let's not call it a chase because at some point Chopper got overhead. Uh, at that point, you know, if you're super far behind, you, you might use lights. You, you got to get in position to apprehend them, but you're not going to actively chase them. Um, Chopper's going to do their work, try to keep eyes on it, which he did. Went all the way down into Dakota County on 52. Um, exited off Rosemount, went westbound up to Robert. North on Robert. Yeah, then went back west again. Yeah. Then. So it kind of wasn't a lot of directional changes, but he, he tried to evade going different streets, but when you have that uh, eye in the sky, they keep a pretty good eye on directions, and you just got to try to put sticks somewhere, which uh, I don't know who, was it Dakota County or Egan who got sticks, but either way, good job. And then I don't think it ended up hit. I think he just, his car, his car had enough, and he put it into the bank. Tried to bail on foot, and uh, yeah, on cops that. were there to welcome him with open away. arms. Yeah. So I'm glad you guys got to see that. That's uh, you know, it's not super common during the day, but this guy, like we said, he's been he's been putting a lot of people at danger, fleeing from police for the last couple of weeks. So you guys saw it last week with Joe. So he needed to go. Plus he had uh, some warrants. Some other people wanted to see him as well. Yeah, he had several active felony warrants. And now he's got a new charge, or new charge is. 4440, 4504 and 4502 myself. So, a lot of different tools, successful outcome. Okay. 
in West St. Paul and try to get back to Ramsey County and do our thing. So what's new, Joe? What's new? Yeah. Work and more work. Thank you, Joe. Um, the viewers love you, so they want they want. Well, they love they, uh, they love Tommy here, Thomas. In Magic Mike or Mike or I'm not sure. Is it Mighty Mike or Mighty Mike? Mighty Mike. It's Mr. Mighty Mike. Mr. Plus. Mighty Mike. Under Sheriff. Oh, yes, sir. Um, Thank you yeah, just busy with uh, the stuff that we do and, and assist the cat team. I gather lots of uh, intel from a variety of different ways. And we don't want to give away all our secrets, but um, okay, we're on the third floor. There's a variety of investigative ways through. Uh, open source, sometimes people give us information that they're concerned, sometimes parents say my son's been hanging around so and so or I, I found this in my son's phone, it's a video with him with a, a firearm or him hanging around somebody and um, yeah, I mean, we've even arrested or the CAT team's arrested. Um, the CAT team and Intel, you, you yeah. have, it all starts with you Joe. Well, thank you for that sir, but um, some, yeah, we've had a, a just I think two weeks ago, one of the mothers, there was a call. I think initially, it was a code at a carjacking. Um, and after investigation, it turns out it wasn't a carjacking. It was like a breach of trust. It was basically stolen, but no, so no carjacking occurred. But anyway, um, well, I don't want to get into two stuff. But it's, it's a lot of times we have cooperating people that um, cooperate with us that are involved in certain incidences. The families or the mothers or the aunts or... Um, legal guardian because um, they're concerned for their for their kids um, so they provide us with information at times and so same with like how the back seaters sometimes give uh, us or Pat and Bob information of tips and yes, so every little bit helps absolutely info from anywhere is good right yeah you know some is better than others but you do your best to vet it and our job is to go out and verify, either prove it right or prove it wrong, right? So. Some of you asked, how do we decide what county it goes to? Well, he fled from us in St. Paul. Uh, as long as we stay with it, which we did, uh, he goes to Ramsey County. He also had warrants up there. Um, some agencies would have just discontinued it, and if uh, another county decides to pick it up in their county, now they have charges in their county, they would go to Dakota. But um, you know us, we want our guys, if we, we start it, we like to finish it. So. Yeah, and I don't know if Thomas mentioned this, but so this actually started in St. Paul. A St. Paul squad spotted this, I think it was at 7th and Minnehaha, and then it uh, obviously took off um, from, uh, from St. Paul at a high rate of speed, and, and then... Uh, made its way down through uh, St. Paul, went through the west side, 52, Plato, um, and then yeah, eventually ended up in uh, Dakota County there. Yeah. It's nothing like a little adrenaline dump to get you going, huh, Joe? It was more uh, motion sickness for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're with Thomas Siegelstrom, I'm with the CAT team, I know probably didn't do a good introduction it just kind of kicked in yeah we apologize we're all discombobulated when we first started here it was uh we want to give you guys action and that yeah. was actually good we planned on going live today we just kicked it on early uh i'm with the cat team joe miller jelly joe you guys know him intel unit uh he's the brains yeah i suppose we should have did our introductions i i, I <laughs> Our bad backseaters. I just we, thought you recognized Thomas's nice voice. Yeah. We didn't get to do the slow roll with the music and stuff. It's Bob and Pat have a good intro. Yeah, that's I wasn't yeah, I wasn't sure if we were the only camera on today or I think so. I think you're it. You're the star. So I wasn't sure if we got a I'm guessing we did there is no other. So Joe, have you ever thrown up on a chase? No. We were, we were prepared to stop though. I mean, it's tough for me to give up, but I don't need vomit in my vehicle. <laughs> 2271, the plate is Hotel x Juliet 699. So, uh, I don't know, again, right? It's, we got a lot of investigations going on. Obviously it was in the news the other day. Uh, there is a 
chase that ended in with two carjackings of innocent bystanders um, up there off of 694. Oh, yeah. Um, that's being investigated. Uh, CAT team, we're gonna, we'll get to the bottom of it and see who's responsible. Um, two were taken into custody on scene and uh, we're working through the case. So hopefully uh, by the end of the week, we have something Bob can update you on. But it's just, it's insane that that happened that, you know. Yeah, that was another um, kind of a, a cluster of confusing, um, the sheriff um, did a phenomenal job of explaining that in, in great detail, um, and it had it made made more sense. Um, but yeah, that's what Thomas basically said is uh, motor vehicle theft, stolen car, and then after the they got involved in a chase, fled two two suspects, at least two male suspects with firearms, fled on foot, and then proceeded to carjack two separate yep. Honda, I think CRVs. Ironically, as that was at the same time. One was recovered, since recovered. Um, I guess I, you know I didn't get a full full update where that's at. It's, it's not my case I'm working. One of my partners is. So um, yeah, we're gonna do what we do best and try to get justice for those innocent people. They're just going about their days, and unfortunately, it turned turned bad. So. Okay, we're out here at uh, Anna Marie Trail and Robert Street where this chase ended up. You might have, on Thomas's feed, you might have seen the uh, commander that was being chased. And the uh, driver had uh, several felony warrants and had a history of um, carrying weapons. So stolen Jeep commander. And of course, we, traffic was, was pretty bad here. Dakota County did an amazing job on the pit maneuver. Thank you, Dakota County. Very appreciative of that. And uh, the medics are coming. Of course, the suspect claimed he had dropped, had uh, swallowed meth, and so he had called EMS. He's just been just been checked in the medic van. Troopers were here as well. Our new uh, our new canine officer, Tony Body, was here. Tony, I think he's a, he was. He was thinking if he ran, he was going to use his dog. What's your dog's name again? Cross. Cross, yeah. He wasn't going to cross him. Kyle Williams. Max Cedars, how you doing? Good. He got he got this head the suspect in his car here. Matt Marson from the you. Intel unit. Hi, everybody. Everybody. So we're just hey Steve. We're just at the end uh, cleaning up. Right. Like I said, the medic just leaving. Play? One of our cars. One of our cars had. Uh, oh, I picked it up. One of our Tahoes had a little uh, motor trouble. <laughs> Thanks, so. uh, I I get the breaker. Sergeant Cervatka's car. Uh, good you should have had a Durango. Should have had a Durango. Hey, Tony, if you got a minute, I want to introduce your dog here. So, obviously, no injuries. Everybody, uh, our apologies to the traffic that was upset today, but we've been looking for this. This suspect for some time and uh tony's gonna show us crow oh there he is there he is there's cross cross brand new member of the, of the cat team so only fitting that cross would be part of the cat team right there he goes gorgeous dog gorgeous dog how long you had him tony uh, two and a half years two and a half years two and a half years Tony was involved in a chase once before on Jeremy Broden's Jeremy's chase where we ended up uh, going up to Elk River, but he got all his tires flattened so did. by some stop sticks. That was no fun, but we're glad we're excited to have you in Cross as part of the unit. Thank you. So I'm going to send you back. Come, come. I'm going to send come. you back to uh, Thomas here, hopefully in a minute. So, actually, 
Actually, I'm not at Siegelstrom. I'm sending you back to Thomas Siegelstrom. That, please. You sent it back. Copy that. Bye. All right, you're back with uh, Jelly Joe and Thomas. I'm glad the sheriff took that. He can. He was on scene still. A little more in depth. He got to meet our new canine, a new officer, Tony. We're excited to have him. He's excited. Uh, he's an awesome cop. A lot of experience. He's gonna teach us some things. We'll hopefully. I don't know. Teach each other some unit. So you know, we get put on do these lies, right? The first couple times you never prep some stuff to just tell the viewers, right? A little maybe public service announcement. And I was thinking about that. Uh, the cars being left running right now in the winter is pretty high yeah, in the mornings. Like I want Chief One, Chief Two, level one speed. A lot of people warm their cars up, leave their keys in, go inside, and they come out, and the car is now gone. Yeah. Especially with the cold, that's that's a very big practice how they're getting these cars. And you know it's tough because a lot of people have kids. You want to warm it up because you don't want to bring infants and young kids out to a cold car, but. Uh, having a stolen car is a lot worse than a cold car. So, try not to leave your cars running. Um, we're seeing a lot of it, especially with these negative weather. It's, uh, it's giving uh, these people who are out to do bad things an avenue. They're giving them a car that's not theirs. They can be a little discreet. Try to, you know, Either are they burglarizing, stealing from others? Robberies do happen. With stolen cars. Yeah, anyway, oftentimes with with a lot of our kids that we've been throughout the last couple of years is, is they'll steal a car, they'll use that stolen car, then drive around, see one that's running, and then a couple of kids will hop out from that stolen car, then hop in the new stolen, um, and it doesn't end there. You know, sometimes there's items in there um, either you know cell phone credit cards left around so then they'll use those credit cards and now you have credit card fraud and I know Bob and Pat have mentioned this several times on their Lima patrol but that's that's still a big thing that's going on is motor vehicle thefts and then the stuff that's the effects that's inside the car they're using those to commit other crimes whether it be the phone or a credit card yeah I mean that's that's for that carjacking's a whole nother thing we we talk to a lot of victims. A lot of the times they're just sitting in their car, you know, waiting for someone. They're on their phone, not paying attention. That are carjacking cars prey on certain individuals. They they go around and size people up before they act. So. You know, try not to be that person who's just chilling out, not paying the things. Um, I I tell my family not to do it. You know, it's common. Hey, I gotta run to the gas station or the store. Hey, you just wait in the car. I'll be right back. Especially yeah. if you got kids with you. Um, if you're gonna do that, be vigilant. Pay attention. They are gonna look attention. You target. Sucks this day and age. You act like that and tell people that. But it is the reality of what's going on right now. Thankfully, not as much as uh, Ramsey County as Minneapolis, but we're not immune to it over here. So, yeah, sometimes they'll make small talk. Hey, uh, you know, wait, what time is it? Or you know, ask for directions or something, and then um, then proceed to rob them or, or carjack them. Get 
stops when you can. So I'll kind of update. We do carjacking, auto theft. Um, we do kind of a specialized duty. We're out looking for stolen cars, carjacked vehicles, possibly anything violent, crime related. Um, you know, it's tough to be out here and just do traffic stops. It's not part of what we do unless it's a public safety thing. Um, kind of takes us out of the game just pulling someone over for uh, minor traffic offenses. So. Yeah, and then, uh, right now, folks, we're on the east side of St. Paul. We're just right by Wilder Rock. We're northbound Edgerton uh, at Case. Uh, it's kind of a hot spot area. It always has been, especially in the summer months. It's really uh, ramped up with this area for activity wise. I got a plate down on Again, we always ask for any questions, anything you're interested in knowing, learning, hey, about our jobs, etc. We're happy to answer them. That was about the big thing going on in the county right now, I think, for the most part. What do we got pending, Joe? Uh, motor vehicle theft. That's a new Brighton. Occurred 30 minutes ago. So not only do we proactively patrol for stolen carjackings, we do, part of our unit has an outreach um, portion to it um, with a lot of these juveniles we're dealing with um, in cooperation with the county attorney's office, um, trying to find alternative solutions to minimize juvenile crime. So we got an officer assigned to that, Kyle Williams, does a great job, he works with uh, navigators who are from the city, city of St. Paul, and that, though I don't have too much involvement on that, I'd say that's more Kyle's piece, but it's just a fat, it's just a small sliver of what we're trying to do. You know, it's not always just catching the bad guys, you know, you gotta try to reform, and a lot of these kids are impressionable, so if we can get them now and try to change their course, one kid's a win, right? Yeah, absolutely, and, and I know uh, Commander Altieri, with, he's with Intel and, and assist the CAT team. He's also involved in the community outreach stuff. He meets along with Kyle uh, like on a regular basis with the um, some of the moms that are the, whether sons and daughters were have been involved in uh, motor vehicle thefts and, and they meet with the navigators and the, the navigators are, are community members, um, not sworn that. Um, how would you kind of describe the navigators? They're they're just not, so they're just civilians. They're people yeah. that you know grew up in St. Paul, grew up in the same neighborhoods as a lot of these kids, like right? A like a mentorship type thing, yep. right? They're there to steer, steer them on the right path, and the, mo the ones that are most at risk for reoffending. And yep, it's kind of, it's kind of like what Rev Spence's yeah team does. Um, this is a little more specific on auto theft um, in in juveniles. So uh, you know it's. You gotta, you gotta have options on what to do with these kids because it's not always cookie cutter. It's not one solution that's gonna fit at all. Forty-four fifty. Is it just no? Okay, 4450. Say it's quiet. I'll take that front. 
Just hear my voice going. Traffic going for the throttle 2303. So it's a lot of calls for service right now and pending. You know, that could be assist citizen. Hey, I need to retrieve some items from uh, criminal damage. Hey, there's damage to my storage locker. Uh, you know, accidents, abandoned vehicles, parking complaints. It's nothing really pending that's of note. Let's run, run through each block once up here. <laughs> What's that? Sam's dirty. I, I, well, the viewers don't know that unless they're from St. Paul. Well, I wasn't as good coming. Actually, what time is it? Um, what time does school usually get out? Because uh, it's about right now. It varies anywhere from like two, what two thirty high school. To, I was gonna run through the Johnson. I like to usually run through there if I'm out and about this time of the day. Yeah, I like to avoid that with all the pedestrian traffic. Well, no, I'm just <laughs> I sit in the parking so on the on the back side where the hockey rink is. Um, Five three seven three. Okay. Stage in the lot. There's sometimes Five, there's like school three, fights three, and. Three, you just hoping you can go lace your skates up. Yeah, well that too. Um, do a couple laps around the rink. Okay. Yeah. I know we get asked every week, plate readers, our unit, our unit and department has them. Not every car. A valuable tool. Someone asked me to explain support mode. Uh, I think a big thing, it just helps with the gear ratio. It's not like it's turbo or anything like that. I'm not a big mechanical guy by any means, but my understanding, it just helps with the shifting and such. Or maybe it's like the placebo effect. It makes me think I'm going faster than I am. Yeah, or it's just... <laughs> Mark DOC reads more of a theft. 2080 Ford Parkway, two people who stole air fryers and Instapots are currently outside near the A line bus stop in front of Walgreens. I was just seeing one that, yeah, where the car was stolen from. 180 copies. Oh, yes, You know who that would be? We are not always two men patrol. The majority of our department is single man, especially on patrol. Uh, two person. Yeah. Patrol, they patrol by themselves unless they're training an officer. Yeah. So depending on what we're doing, sometimes we'll double up in our unit. Are you able to do a call back? But if it's just routine CAT team doing CAT team, we're out singly. Kind of spreads us out, gives us more coverage. But it is nice having a partner. Joe's running the computer, running the radio. Goodbye. Fixing his hair in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You ever heard the, the phrase, just pretend to look busy? That's what I'm doing. No, I'm kidding. I'm helping. I'll be repping a big 10 here on it. So right now we're at Hazelwood, Maryland. Um, it used to be called Sam's Dairy, and all the old timers, people that have been around, call it Sam's Dairy, but it's actually Santa's Market now. Is, that's what it's called. I can't believe this intersection does not have a light signal. It's a busy intersection. Mm -hmm. So, no turn signal. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. The parties are GOA in, the in my head, I knew what I was saying. It didn't come out. My wife says I do that a lot. So it's like, I'm pretty sure we're at a stop. Sometimes I think you can <laughs> stop. You understand? Like, you know. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You meant the arrow. Yeah. 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 The turn signal. Uh, doesn't sound like the new air Kias and Hyundai's are as easily stolen. Mike, your Tahoe's? Um, 
I, I don't know what year or what, you know, I know they release cars in like quarters, you. you know, that might have an update. Don't know if it was the end of 2022 or 2023s that now have been fixed to prevent how they've been stealing. I'd ask it, a dealership. I know a lot of the higher ends, the Tellurides and Palisades have always had that. Um, that's a good question. I, I think they're nice cars, right? They're very affordable. It just sucks that they have that option to easily be stolen. Who's driving? Thomas is driving. Yeah, I can't drive as good as Thomas. We, we can change, we can swap. Now oh, that I'm grabbing at normal operational speeds, I'm well, less, less nauseous. <laughs> now, the road's uh, very bumpy on the side road, so we might re-kick that in. here shortly maybe we'll just go up I don't know drive up into Maplewood and maybe see some different scenes not much going on down here I must say that was fun earlier Yeah, it was fun. Do you regret telling me you'd come with me today? <laughs> oh, no. No, it was, it was good. Right here. Broke the well, it just goes to show you that I mean, this guy was all, you know, how fast he can get from one spot. You know, of course, he's driving, you know, excess was... I mean, he wasn't even being pursued, running stops. Right, that's stop what I'm saying. Lights. The chopper was up, but us just trying to get in the area. It's like, he's, you know, he was in St. Paul, he's in the west side, and, he, you know, he's in Rosemont, Dakota County, and then coming back, and then back down south, and so cover a lot of area you know when driving the way he was driving you know some of you are jumping on late we're in st paul minnesota for our rams county sheriff's deputies with the cat team and intel where'd you get your nickname jelly joe well there's a couple different theories on that um the original theory was P, B, and J for the the real hardcore original a couple years ago when back when Live by Patrol first started. It was Bob, Pat, Joe, so you had P, B, and J. Um, then the other theory was, is I see Jelly Joe's hair, he's got a lot of gel in it. I'm, I'm guessing he gets his name because all the gel he puts in his hair. Both are acceptable theories. If you're not willing to tell us how what the real story uh, is. No, the, the original one is, is PB and J. So Bob, Pat, and Joe. Or Pat, Bob, and Joe. Um, from the early days of Live on Patrol. lesson did we learn from today though and I know that I, I broke my I broke the golden rule uh, never get into an instant like that with not enough gas <laughs> oh yes yes I was trying to think on that one yeah um, yeah we were just uh, running out of fumes I know better but I, w I wasn't quite prepared to come on this early so well that was we literally just hopped in the car and then um, we had, had the camera and, and the, the Sheriff's Department, world's smartest or man, whatever, Kyle Neistat, said, hey guys, start rolling. Have a good day, 
Or the smartest man at the sheriff's office. <laughs> Kyle uh, is dead. Someone noticed that you changed your voice. A lot of people would love to meet you, Joe. You only make special appearances, though. I've been to quite a few backseater events over the years. We had the, uh, the anniversary at Tom Reed's. Um, what else did we have? Uh, Madness Heights Park. State Fair, numerous appearances. Got to meet several backseaters at the State Fair. Worked all 12 days last year. Is, it, is everyone home still on that? I doubt it. Got me worried. 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 Got me uh, this person uh, pushing 500 pounds away as much help as we can get. Uh-oh. 18, I copy. 13, 51. 27, 5, 6, clear. She has already. Thank you, 6, They're always working on something. Yeah, I just got a text. Somebody always, always digging. <clears throat> We're gonna mute you real quick. Sorry guys, just had to make a phone call. So we're coming up into Maplewood. Check out what's going on the Maplewood Mall that's always got stuff going on. A lot of stolen's coming and going from there. Yeah, for a while this was a hot spot area up here, then a little bit further north towards the, the mall here. Um, Stolen cars, and then, of course, this time of the day there's a lot of traffic out, so um, it'll be difficult to, to get into something. To, but yeah, this was a pretty hot spot area for for a while. Um, kind of, it still is, but we just haven't seen as much lately. Recently, in the last couple weeks, that we've normally seen. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's. You know, known, you guys see it, a lot more stolens are in St. Paul, occur in St. Paul, they show up in St. Paul. Suburbs aren't immune to it, so we try to we try to work different areas um, based off of the crime trend. So, you'll see us a lot of the times in St. Paul, but that that's just, you know, we got to follow the numbers, so. We're sorry for not talking too much during the pursuit. Well, like I said, it wasn't much of a pursuit. It was the, us trying to get in position. And But when you're driving like that, sometimes you, you got to focus. Yeah, we were trying to, I mean, we literally just uh, got thrown in the car and we had the camera and then um, we pushed the, the button and then we kind of totally forgot to explain kind of what we were doing, who we were going after. We were so focused on the details of the, of the bad guy and him whatever the details of that trying to find out the location where he was going and listen to all the radios and the chopper overhead and we forgot to do the, the introductions and who we were going after yeah yeah what's what's the intel unit do uh good question that's a variety of things um so one main component is um 
if let's say Cat T makes an arrest, we'll uh, process any, any electronics, phones, if they have phones, we'll get a search warrant for their phones, so we'll go through the phones, um, the forensics basically of it, and look to see who they've been communicating with, a lot of these people post pictures of guns and a um, variety of things, for the criminal activity that we weren't aware of, some of it we are aware of, and um, so we'll, we'll go through the phones, that's one thing. Uh, more like proactively is is we'll monitor um, some of the we'll get tips from from people of social media um, posting about things or if they've been involved in something. Sometimes the tips come from from family members, so we'll we'll do what, like a follow up. We'll do a workup. So basically, when the cat team hits the streets, we'll say, hey, these these five individuals. Um, have a, a known auto theft history, and you should focus on these individuals. This is where they live. This is where their girlfriend lives. This is where the aunt lives. Um, we have information. They stay at this house during the week. So we'll, we'll get addresses and kind of do like a, like a whole profile workup on five or six individuals that we're kind of currently monitoring that are on our radar that have been active, uh, repeat offenders. Um, so we stay busy doing that. Um, yeah, a lot of it is just um, kind of comes at us and, and there'll be a, a shooting um, or uh, uh, we're looking at crime trends and trying to figure out who's doing what, you know, connecting the dots um, to uh, basically get ahead of the, of the curve and figure out who's doing this. And So pretty much any shooting, um, egg assault shooting, a lot of times there's, there's gang, like a gang component involved in it. We'll, uh, we'll look into it. We'll see if it's maybe the, uh, you know, they call them not the ops or rivals, which means like opposition, someone that they're um, feuding with or have beef with from things. Um, and sometimes it's it's internal where it's like, well, this doesn't make any sense. Like these guys are supposed to be friends. Why is this person shooting at that person? Or why, you know, and then you find out that there's, you know, stuff behind the scenes that, that's, that gets uncovered. So basically, uh, it's a, a lot. It's it's a big mixed bag of things that we do in Intel. It's not just one. You're the utility. You're like a utility team. Whatever yeah. you need. So there's and there's I think there's five of us. Um, we have a sergeant that's sworn, another deputy that's a sworn deputy, and then analysts that are that are non-sworn that are really helpful. Um, Thanks for the explanation, Joe. Yeah, I mean, I hope I kind of had it makes sense to me, but it's it's kind of hard because we we do so much different things. It's not just one simple answer. I just want to ask: Do we have to ask permission for pursuits? Um, any deputy can initiate. Well, it's the bad guy who initiates the pursuit. They decide, you know, to not stop for a traffic stop. Um, any, any deputy can choose to continue it. They'll air it. Um, they can discontinue it any any time. That officer, if there's another deputy in it that might see something that the lead officer doesn't see, they can discontinue it for, for various reasons. And then also, ultimately, the supervisor. If the supervisor is hearing or seeing something or knows something that they're not fully happy with, they can uh, terminate the pursuit via via the radio um i think our department does a really good job the deputies at the deputy level of using their intelligence to determine you know is it safe should i be pursuing this vehicle a in your head why am i pulling this over why am i making the stop that's that's first and foremost that should be in your head to decide to pursue someone i pulled someone over for speed they're gonna flee it's 3 30 in the afternoon and we're in the city of st paul you know i probably not gonna chase that car if i have nothing no other indicators me myself and i'm not gonna go after it yeah i i, I have, i'm behind a fresh carjacking use at gunpoint you know my 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 level of how i'm going to operate is going to go up from there um, and it's always changing you're reevaluating during a pursuit during an incident um, taking in new information which can change how you're going to react.
So, I mean, that's a good question, but we don't we don't take pursuing cars lightly. You know, yes, is, can it be exhilarating? Yes, do I love our job and it's fun, but we're not going to do it at the expense of other people's safety. We do it because we're trying to keep our community safe. It's a big goal. Yeah. Especially like in the winter months, it's, you know, obviously the time of the day, the road conditions, and then the level, the seriousness of the crime. You know, is it a traffic stop or carjacking? Yep. And, and they're very, uh, when you have incidents, whether it's pursuits, a uh, stressful call, violent crime call, uh, everything's fluid, uh, human emotions come into it. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a lot to take in it takes a lot of training and exposure to it to be able to handle and process all the information coming in while operating at a higher level um, and that's where good training officers come in uh, making sure a you get at that experience before you get out on your own making sure you know how to make those decisions the whys that's why it's awesome having a partner with you um, they're gonna see things that you might not see while driving so so we're Maplewood right now up by all the dealerships Not much goes on up here. I mean, obviously you have the cars taken from the dealerships, but usually there's other factors into that. Right. We work. We try to work with a lot of dealerships. It's good connections. They're a good resource for our job. Um. <laughs> Five to nine. Uh, yeah, sorry, nice. I saw somebody. Really when, when you're out right behind us, when you're out driving, you recognize people you know. So. Rams County is a small, small area. What else can we talk about, Joe? What else is going on in the world of law enforcement or our world? I, mean, I think we covered a lot of it um, throughout the last week and Monday with that incident. With the, that's a good example of how things are fluid and changing. And you know, initially, I think information was aired that there was a carjacking involved, and it turns out that wasn't the case. Someone made a fictitious call. Or, yeah, they tried to divert cops off of them. Yeah. So that's a prime example for Monday. Was it Sunday into Monday? Uh, no, Mon Monday night. Monday night. Word. Yep. Um, someone asked how the, the dog is fine. Um, broken leg. Uh, I, I, it's unbelievable. Obviously, the poor thing was out all night. And it had to have been negative temperatures that night. Yeah. Um, our patrol our patrol deputies, people from our patrol division, essentially, I, I don't know what time they started, but pretty early, crack of dawn, got drones out and went looking for that dog. Um, and uh, one of our patrol sergeants uh, luckily stumbled upon him. They got him to the vet. Sounds like he should be on the mend, um, but that's pretty horrible. I mean, I don't know if it was their dog. We don't know if it was the... Uh, dog of the people who fled someone else's dog obviously the vehicle they fled in was stolen so could that have been someone else's dog very possible i don't have that answer but for a human being to toss a dog out the window right cruel pretty cruel so i know, know a lot of dog lovers of you out there um i got myself that's something that makes you a little sick to your stomach. Not my driving, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. The suburb of Minneapolis. It's the bordering city. Twin cities, you'll hear. St. Paul, Minneapolis. St. Paul is the capital of Minnesota. Obviously, Minnesota, uh, Minneapolis is the big uh, metropolitan area. That's where I am, target, target field, target center. A lot of, it's obviously bigger too, so they're able to hold more, uh, but I much, I much prefer myself, St. Paul.
think one of my favorite things about these lives is seeing the comments. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, don't, I really don't read the comments, but. We learned some stuff. What are they saying? A lot of questions, and then it's not. It's cool to hear about where people are from. It's crazy the distance that LP has traveled. I mean, crossing oceans. Bob and Pat have a huge following. They they put something pretty cool together, and uh, I mean, we're lucky just to have a little small piece in it. Right. Yeah. When this first. Two years ago now? Yeah, I don't, I guess I was on patrol. I didn't, I don't know when that exact, this exactly started. We'll just say two years ago. Um, yeah, I had no idea they would have gotten, gotten this big. This, uh, popular with people to watch and tune in and, and whatnot. Nope. It's. Let's see. Oh, oh a DLC. Okay. Okay, back. All right. Started July of 2020. There you go. July of 2020. Okay, so it'll be three years in July yep. then. Okay. Uh, July of 2020 will always stick in my head. I, it was the evening my partner and I on patrol got shot at. Doing a traffic stop for a drunk guy. Now, if you don't mind sharing to our viewers, no, <laughs> this is shocking. And uh, you were actually shot at a couple of times. Uh, I, I, let, let's say I've been shot in the, my direction twice. That's and shot at it. Let's, we'll use that loosely. No, no rounds ever luckily hit. And well, not that I know of had risk of hitting me. Um, but I guess a little bit, July 2020, um, I'm not going to share his name because I know not every deputy likes their name out there, but partner of mine stopped a vehicle on 36 westbound coming up to Rice Street. He thought he had a, a drunk driver. Um, we had recently just cleared a call where we arrested someone for domestic violence. He had my handcuffs, and when a partner, especially on nights, makes a traffic stop, um, you're going to go back them. You're going to back your partner up. Uh, so I responded to the area, arrived on scene. I don't think I was out, out of my squad, maybe 60 seconds, made it up to the passenger side door with my partner while he was uh, doing his investigation. And a vehicle was coming eastbound and started firing, which we, we think in our direction at our squad. Um, we only thought, you know, we heard a couple, couple rounds but auditory exclusion is a real thing. We listened to the audio. It was uh, upwards of 12 rounds um, were shot in our direction. Uh, pretty much, I think that night it was pretty cool to see all the different departments get put high alert. Uh, big kudos to Maplewood. They actually uh, located the vehicle shortly thereafter. Um, vehicle fled into St. Paul. They lost it. Um, but then returned to an apartment building the vehicle was spotted at, took someone into custody. Unfortunately, I think that car case, nothing, it didn't go anywhere. Um, there was two occupants in the vehicle. Uh, it was hard to determine who actually shot at us. So that, that was uh, tough, tough to swallow. But um, my partner and I, we were fine. I can't say, you know what affects people differently? A lot of cops list different situations. There's a lot of high stress that we go through, and sometimes it could just be a small call that affects cops. I, was, for my sake, it was pretty easy to move on and continue my job, which I'm glad. Um, that's That could have a lasting effect on, especially a young cop, I'd say. I mean, <laughs> I'm definitely, a, on the younger side, experience in years. Um, so that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think the second time was since I was the, with the cat team. I remember that night. I don't want, I don't know what month it was. Last year, 
Um, we responded in. We were working on a, a group of kids, and uh, we had some bodies out, um, proactively looking through St. Paul. We had some uh, leads. I was on uh, Maryland and uh, ran a license plate. It's actually a temp tag. You guys have probably seen them. Um, it's the white temp tags you now see in Minnesota when you first get a vehicle registered. It came back stolen. Um, it was on a darker colored Impala. Um, I was in a super unmarked vehicle following them. Um, they went into a neighborhood off of Maryland and Dale. Um, start, looked like kids started bail out of it. They took a look back at me. I let them go. Um, I was by myself. I wasn't going to take any action. I was occupied quite a few times. Um, let them go. Round Hatch McCubbin. I followed maybe 15 seconds later and uh, here's someone posted out in the middle of the street out of the passenger side door shooting rounds at me. I don't even know how many rounds that was. That one happened. Happened pretty fast. Nothing hit. I was okay. Uh, we gave chase. Again, that was the early stages of the cat team. We had a lot of uh, subdued unmarks, you would say. Yeah. Um, say that. So it was tough to keep up with that vehicle. It was the middle of, you know, middle of the night after midnight. Um, they darked out. Uh, we were able to find street video of where they went. Um, and again, that was, I think, one that still, still waiting for any leads. But um, I was good, and uh, I can say I know what. Uh, Gunfire sounds like when it's coming at you. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's still a very scary situation. Uh, yeah. um, I have a second time in a short, you know, within a year. Yeah, it was about, uh, yeah, within a year. Then. Close to, right? Yeah. Let's let's pray there's not a third time. I'm not, I don't think I have nine lives like a cat. Well, just as long as I'm not with you when it happens. Hey. Well, we, we call them black clouds in law enforcement. <laughs> things just follow you. Right? Yeah. You're just that cop that things happen to. So. We're back in St. Paul. I want to find something, so we're just going to... Yeah, we should be at Edgerton in Maryland. Uh, yep. Chi-Town Grill and Grocery. Actually, pretty good food there. I've, I've ate there once, or had food there once. There? Yeah. I drove for six nine, show me a couple of years ago. Happy. I can't say I've ate, I've ate there, but I'm not gonna lie, I've probably yeah, have bad we'll eating habits right eating. now. Eat like once a day. Happy, have a good night. My, wife's, my wife says it's very unhealthy, but <laughs> <laughs> when you got young kids, you're your, your sleep schedule, everything gets messed up. So, just trying to get through the the young infant years, toddler years, and then we'll then we'll figure it out. We're calling a penny for a property. Yeah, there's a lot of decorations out there. Across from the bulldog on Sixth Street, Charlie Fox Drive, Victor One Seventy Five. Have they recovered any casings from the ones that've been shot at? You know, that's a good question. That was before I was an investigator. And to be honest, you know, some of the easiest ways to get that out of your headspace is not look into it. Dwelling on stuff like that when you're continuing to do the job can maybe make you hesitate. I don't look into it. It, it happened. I'm, I'm content. I'm pretty sure there was cases for cover. Yeah. No, since then. Oh. So a lot of a lot of shootings will happen. They'll get tested to see if they come back. I don't know. I don't have. That I see what you're saying. Yeah, yep. like that. That not even hits or the ballistics though. Yep. Honestly, at this point, eh, I, not on my radar. On to, on to the next thing. Continue to do my job. Continue living life. Being able to have the opportunity to chauffeur you around for the days. Enough for me, Joe. Well, thank you. You know, for a while, too, um, this Case and Burr store that's up here at uh, well, Case and Burr um, <laughs> used to be uh, 
used to, used to have a lot of uh, kind of a hangout, kind of a hot spot. And there were some assaults that happened around here, and um, but I would say in the last four to five years, it hasn't been like it used to be. Let me clear report. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't say it's been super crazy since I've been on the cat team. Let them come through. Um, but just this scenario in general, obviously. Anyone who's watched any of Bob's lives knows this area, Wilder Rec, Case and Edgerton is definitely a hot spot for things we do. Yeah, in, in, in the summer months, it's, uh, yeah, you would see a lot of just uh, gatherings and people. And, and they, there used to be that gas station there, the, I think it was the Holiday, no, maybe it was the SA. It went across from Cora's Chicken, that used to be another kind of a hangout. And of course, Arlington Rec, um, you see just kids kind of hanging around there, and, and um, for a while, I think it was 2016, 2017, there was like a uh, like a rap battle between two St. Paul uh, gangs. The, it was the Hit Squad and the um, Ham Crazy Gangs. And, um, of course, now we've got older and kind of not as active, and several of the gang members between both were um, actually federally indicted on gun charges. So both those gangs kind of cooled off, and you don't hear much about them like you used to and um, but for a while that was a hot summer with the, the rap battles going back and forth and some shootings and New message. anyway that was kind of like an area you'd see people filming their videos and stuff um, in that area hey, that's something I didn't know a little before my time yeah that's uh, they would, and they post them on YouTube and then they would um, Jesus they wrote his, um, taunt their rivals New message. And, Wealth of knowledge, Joe. You just keep talking and tell us, tell us those things. One day I'll be as smart as you. Well, I don't. That's uh, not as Thank old. you for that, but I don't know about you, but I'm ready for summer. Me too. I'm actually ready for Florida. <laughs> it's one of my favorite spots. Where do you like to go? Or is that well, maybe no. we like to keep that secret? Nah, I don't care, because um, the sheriff always, uh, well, Fort Myers was always a good good area, um, Fort Myers Beach, and the sheriff always mentioned that Jelly Joe's favorite spot. And, um, but now, you know, with the Hurricane Ian that went through there, it destroyed a whole, pretty much a lot of that area. So a lot of our places we stayed at are, were ruined in the, the hurricane, so. Yeah, that was pretty devastating. That would have a rental property or business down there that but um, you got, you know, Bonita Springs, Naples, Marco Island, Sanibel Island, and so there's still some areas that um, weren't as badly as damaged that are still up and functional where you can, allowing people to uh, place it to stay, you know, that are resorts that are open. So is that where uh, we can find you in retirement? Definitely, that's my, my goal is to go to Florida. That's a good goal. see yeah quiet it started off with a bang and well there is one thing you don't want to say the q word but i've said it twice now and it hasn't worked so 4450 maybe there really is a black cloud 4450 oh, oh, oh i'm just kidding no contact squad's clear report 60 on six. all right well okay. What's, what's coming up? It's February. The hot state tournament for hockey's next month. That's that's up your alley, right? Yeah, that's a big uh, big time um, fun event. It's, uh, your you know, nephew, nephew played in it last year, right? Yeah, he plays for Hill Murray. Actually, I got two two of my brother's kids play on the Hill Murray. One's on the JV and one's on the on the varsity. And are they uh, better than Uncle Joe? Yeah, yeah, they are. They <laughs> didn't. Uh, they definitely didn't get their. Uh, they got it from somewhere else because. I played varsity hockey, but I was never a all-star. Forty-five was arriving. Well, Hill Murray's pretty uh, known for hockey. It's a private school, so I mean, anyone Happy. playing on that team obviously is a good skater. Yeah, I guess couldn't get the get the vibe. Well, probably nothing, but new message. Just curious. New message. Message. 
guess another thing, you know, pertaining our job, uh, you know, a lot of people buy vehicles on Facebook. Um, you meet up with someone, you sign said title over, right? Yeah. And you buy the vehicle. Um, a lot of vehicles are being stolen and people are trying to resell them as non-stolen. What I mean, they're swapping plates, they're swapping the VIN, um, trying to change the identifiers to then go and sell that. Um, I know people probably don't always go on Carfax, you know, try to check the history of the vehicle. My biz biggest suggestion to anybody not buying from a dealership, if you're buying a, a Chevy, try to get in contact with the dealership and have this, the VIN ran to make sure it's not a fake VIN. Sounds kind of paranoid, but we're seeing more and more, and you know, we'll find these cars where someone, you know, it ends up being stolen after we run the VIN, but that person bought it, thought they bought a legit car. Yeah, yep. And uh, that person is now out that money because that's not your car, unfortunately. Just because you paid someone five grand doesn't mean you get to keep it. Yeah, and that actually happened about a month ago um, to somebody, and, and um, they said, yeah, I got a, got a great deal on this. I, I went out to uh, you know, California or whatever to buy the car, and it was a good deal. And so kind of, if it sounds too good to be true, there might be, you know, something more to it. Just a thought, but um, yeah, the guy had no idea, and um, yeah, he's like Thomas was saying, you're out the money. How do they get the VIN off? Most times they're not pulling the VIN, they're putting something over it. We've seen pop cans, we've seen, you know, pieces of aluminum, they're stamping it in there, we've seen paper, we see them try to cover the VIN, you know. Um, but some are organized though, where, yep. where it looks like, wow, like I don't know how, this, this is definitely an organization that uh, took some time to make this look legit, so. Yeah, and there's other VINs stamped throughout vehicles that, you know, you just gotta be uh, aware of what you're buying. Um, with what I'm seeing, I don't think I, it'd be hard for me to go buy with, you know, not a dealership. But there's avenues to, to check those. Like I said, check Carfax, call, a, you know, whatever the manufacturers, call the dealership, try to have the VIN ran. Um, just try to make sure you're not getting scammed. Because like Joe said, all of a sudden someone, buy, someone posts a 2018 Mercedes for three grand. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, not, they're not usually that obvious, but there's a, you know, pretty significant price. Like, wow, this is a good deal. And there's probably a reason for that. A lot of the times the VINs look real and then you run them and only the last, you know, a lot of dealerships or, you know, tow companies, they deal in like the last five digits of the VIN and the rest of it is fictitious. So running a whole VIN helps. up to Ray Street. We've now crossed over. We're in uh, the central district of St. Paul. What car dealer will run them? Eh, sometimes you just, you know, got to call and see if a dealership will help you, you know. Let the let someone know you're just looking to buy a used car and you just want to make sure everything's on the up and up. Can't imagine a lot of dealerships would have an issue. Um, some would. I mean, I, every dealership's different. Or if you got a but a friend that's in the car industry. But Carfax is a good one too. You know, if it's a 2010 and the first Carfax pops up in 2016 of it, you know, at low mileage, eh, it's something to raise your eyebrows about. But Yeah, I, I paid money on because I always, I always bought used cars. And I um, can't remember what, what it was, but it was one of those where you can buy um, either certified pre-owned or but there's a website or database that you can pay. It's like at the time it was 12 bucks a month or something. Or you can pay like, you know, um, $10 for 10 VIN checks. So if you're looking to buy a car, it'll give you the car's history and tell you, you know, each time it's had, you know, service done on it. Uh, it's been involved in accidents and, you know, 
the single owner, multiple owners, and kind of gives you the history of it. And I've done that myself. Just paid, you know, twelve bucks to use this what service. I think it. You showed me a Roger Woodbury Humanity. There's a lot of different ways. And I guess what we're just saying is, be aware of what you're buying. Even buying other stuff on Facebook. It's tough nowadays, especially electronics, to know it's not stolen. And unfortunately, if you buy something that was entered in as stolen, and yet, for whatever reason, it's tracked, and they locate it on you, and you tell them you paid 50 bucks for it, it's still not yours. So, common sense always prevails, but... Unfortunately, people who do this for a living are always thinking of new ways to scam the system and get away with it. So that's a full-time job for them. So. Clear. Good. Yeah, it was clear. Yeah. 18 degrees. 18 degrees out right now. I'm not, not in a hurry to get back out of my squad. So we're at Rice in front. Um, of course, the Mama's Pizza's right there, and then Tommy actually, uh, I don't know if you'll admit this, but Tommy was a pretty good Golden Gloves boxer back no, in his day. No, 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 no. I had, I had two amateur fights. Maybe he wasn't Golden Gloves, but he was a boxer. No. And my my family was. I have two older brothers who were national Golden Gloves champs. One, uh, one fought uh, at, like, the PAL fought down like Puerto Rico. He's a highly ranked amateur, turned professional. I'd say he had a pretty good career. Um, fought on HBO, Showtime, pay-per-view. Two, uh, two other uncles boxed as well at Rice Street. That's what I was mentioning this. Yeah. It's, we're on Rice Street and Rice Street has a rich history of uh, boxers being from St. Paul, Minnesota. But, yeah. what, what is it? It's the Old Street, right? Old Rice Street boxing gym now? Yeah, I can't see what it's called. It Mike was, Evgen. Yeah, there you go. That guy. Mike Evgen's running it. Um, I think the last time I saw posting, it's Matt Vanda's help coaching there. So, Matt Vanda was another big time uh, boxer. Went to the big leagues. Yeah. I think one of his last few fights, he ended fighting uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., which obviously, if any fight fans out there, Julio Cesar Chavez was a renowned Hispanic boxer from Mexico. So that that was a pretty big fight. Junior won a couple world titles. So I think he I think he won the first fight. I, I can't remember. It was years ago. So, but there's definitely used to be a history. I know there's still gyms around. There's a lot of people trying to keep it going. A lot of good gyms. Um, it's just not as big as you'd see in like on the east or west coast or even like uh, Detroit or Chicago. Isn't there like a new gym that's going to be opening up? I think on the east side of St. Paul. Um, well, uh, Sir Ceresio boxing gym. He was a fighter from uh, Rice Street back back when my brothers fought. Uh, he has his own gym that was on Wheelock and Arcade. He since I think they relocated to a newer building on Arcade. Um, I, I was been at his old gym a couple times. Uh, my great uncle. And his son, his son was getting into boxing while he was uh, going attending school at Hamlin. Uh, Ceresio Ford is his name. He put together a pretty good program. Um, not just focusing on boxing, but life skills. I see his Facebook posts all the time. Um, that's definitely a guy who has done uh, pretty well for himself, and he's got a good thing going for him. So. If anyone's ever interested in getting their kids into that, it's a good sport, keeps you disciplined. Um, there's a lot of gyms in St. Paul that have good people running them, uh, and it keeps uh, kids out of trouble. So Yeah, no doubt, but yeah, it's not as big as it uh, used to be. No, and, it, it, you know, maybe some of the kids that were out chasing around could uh, use that a little structure, discipline. Also, it's a place for them to go, right, it's after not school. Not a bad idea. Rams County Sheriff's House Boxing Gym? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not a bad idea. Yeah. Fight in the ring, not in the streets? Yeah, and it's not even about fighting. It's, you know, it's working out. It's having a place to go. Um, but, yeah, it is. I mean, it is. It ultimately keeps you out of the street stuff. Um, yeah. 
It's a cool atmosphere. How much longer are we going, do you think? It's up to you. Text, text the, the boss. And just ask. Starting to get about rush hour. Everyone's getting out of work, getting out of school. It's probably stuff to be found, but it's definitely a lot harder when there's more traffic. Just a lot to pay attention to. So, it's probably night. It's nice working at night. Less cars. Usually, you know, you have odds of either someone's going to work or they're out to, to no good. So. Maryland, heading east now, towards Rice, kind of where we just came from, sort of. How long is your shift, Joe? My shift? Yeah. I was wondering. Uh, it, it, I mean, some days it's eight hours, some days it's 12 hours. Um, it all depends. It all depends on what's going on. Um, typically, usually eight hours. Yeah. Um, boxing gyms in Minneapolis. I know there's some over there. COD, Circle of Discipline. Um, uh, trying to think of a few others. I know some others have popped up. I mean, it's been 10, 10 years since I've kind of paid attention to that scene. But there are gyms out there, especially in Minneapolis. You just gotta gotta look for them. I know Uppercut used to be off a. Of, uh, what street is that? Ah, uh, Stinson and 35W, I forget the street. That since has closed, but they had a pretty good program going there. I remember Burnett Boxing. Uh, yeah, too. American Legion off of Arcade, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was in the basement of the Legion. That was an interesting gym. Um, I never trained there or anything, but my brothers used to have their amateur fights and go into those cards. That was pretty cool. This is just a close-knit community. I don't know how it is now, but... Who's the better driver in the car? Oh, Thomas. That's an easy one. I don't think we've ever fully gotten to see your driving skills though, Joe. I think you're being modest. When you have that look of that like Italian mobster guy. Okay. Hang on. Okay. We did, didn't we? Yeah, kind of. Um, if anyone missed it, we'll go a little more into depth. Um, kind of start off Joe's part, how we came up on it. Want to kind of start it off? Yes. Yeah, so the Intel unit, like I was saying, um, we a couple months ago we've been monitoring individuals' uh, social media and how we get the social media's a variety of sources. Or people send it to us. We'll, we'll do a cell phone dump for making an arrest. So we, so we come into these contact with these videos from, from a variety of ways. Um, so uh, we've been monitoring an individual who had been posting on social media with, with firearms, with guns. And no, known individual to us. A known well. individual to us that we've, the CAT team and Intel, we've arrested before um, previously. And, and I think we actually had contact with him at the state fair. He was involved in a fight out there. Um, anyway, so this person is known to us, and they have been posting on social media with multiple firearms over the course, I think dating back since October, November, December, and then January um, with firearms. So we developed some intel, some information, um, where, the, where this individual was, was posting at, and, and we knew this person was on probation. Um, Supervised probation with Ramsey County, and they also have uh, EHM, which stands for uh, Electronic Home Monitoring, better known as a ankle bracelet. So um, we formulated a plan, and um, well, essentially, you guys did what you did best: found the info, found the video with him with the guns. It was assigned to a CAT team member. Myself, I took the case. 
Um, essentially, at that point, we're now just trying to verify, you know, is there a gun? Does this kid have a gun? Um, and take action. Uh, we essentially deep dived into it. Got enough info that we were confident uh, that this individual is carrying around a real gun. Um, essentially, um, I obtained a search warrant for this person and uh, his residence. Um, I had enough based off of everything. Uh, PC probable cause, pick him up on possession of a firearm. But uh, our ultimate goal is to get that gun off the street. Um, so essentially we worked with our Rams County apprehension team yesterday, coordinated a plan, uh, took this uh, 16 year old into custody, getting off the bus um, from school with the gun in his backpack. Um, so this gun, like we said earlier, had an extended mag and at what appears to be an auto sear or switch, which makes the gun fully automatic. Um, again, we have to have that sent for testing to verify it. Um, in order to get that charge, but the concerning thing is this individual had a fully, what we believe a fully automatic firearm at school. Um, we essentially executed our search warrant, uh, and now that person is at the JDC. So again, a lot of good work by multiple units. Huge thank you to the apprehension team um, for assisting us. Intel obviously drove the bus on that one. That's not possible without uh, them doing their job. So another gun off the street, but not enough, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know if we mentioned, so this individual juvenile was 16 years old. Um, so, and then obviously thanks to the apprehension unit for um, helping assist on this uh, with the arrest and apprehension of the juvenile. So, but we'll, we'll have more to come in the coming weeks. Um, he is 16, so we're looking at some options with charging um, that 16 year old so we'll uh, more to come he obviously needs uh, some guidance um, and hopefully we'll coordinate with uh, his probation officer and the county attorney's office to make sure you know that uh, he's not back out obtaining another firearm obviously he needs I don't know what he needs I don't know his history seems like a seems like a good kid so um, More info will come of that. So, but that's pretty much going to be a wrap, folks, for the live on patrol. Thanks, backseaters, for tuning in. Um, we again apologize for kind of how we just kind of got started. We didn't really do the do the introductions and kind of threw you in the mix without kind of telling you a backstory of what we were doing and basically who who, uh, who we were, um, which car you're in, which backseat you're in. So, um, we'll get you back out with Thomas and Joe again. I got a little we'll finagle him to come back out. So he likes to make rare appearances. So we appreciate you riding. We're gonna go uh, continue our day. Thanks. Thanks. Um,